الحمد للہ الحمد للہ والصلاۃ والسلام على رسول اللہ اما بعد السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ایوری ون سو ان شاء اللہ وین آئی واز پلاننگ فار ٹو ڈے سیشن مائی اوریجنل پلان واز دیٹ آئی واز گوئنگ ٹو ان شاء اللہ ڈسکس دیٹ آن واٹ بیسز وی ہیو دس کنوکشن that there is life after death and the reason is when it comes to religion not only islam i would say any religion there are three claims which are fundamental number one existence of god number two after life and number three need for revelation Obviously, if we talk about Abrahamic religions, the point of disagreement starts on this third point, revelation. Because our claim is, and our belief is, that Quran is the final and authentic revelation of God. And if anyone wants salvation, now the only way to get salvation is implementing Quran and obviously when we say Quran it implies belief in Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because he is the one upon whom the Quran was revealed. So these are the three fundamental claims. So I just change a bit, a, a bit of my plan and inshallah my intention in today's session is that I will wrap up the whole discussion so you can have a clear picture in your mind that what is the map we are following. Because sometimes if things are just kind of scattered thoughts, after some time you will forget them. But inshallah, if everything is in a systematic and organized way, not only it will be easy for you to understand, but inshallah it will stick in your mind for a longer time and inshallah it will be easy for you to share with the others and remember this point in these sessions i am not just focusing on this one small point that okay i want to talk to someone and i want to give him information about islam but before that before that i need to understand my foundation myself as well <coughs> because sometimes It is, it is quite possible that we our own self, even though we having a cultural understanding which we receive from our culture and tradition of different aspects of Islam, but we have not really studied those aspects of our being from tradition. So inshallah, have this in your mind that it is not just to have information to share with the others, but at, before that it is about our own self to understand our foundation. So we can have a clear understanding of the message which we want to share with the other. So I will take you to session number three. You remember that in our first session, we discussed that our fundamental message is that we are calling mankind to the worship of one true God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is our fundamental message. And then From this topic, the discussion automatically went on the subject of God's existence. Because obviously, if you call someone to worship one true God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this person says that, but I don't believe in God, then obviously it becomes uh, a necessity that to address this topic. Even though I strongly believe that even if you are able to establish existence of God with the most sound rational argument, it is still not sufficient if the other person is not willing to embark on this journey of finding God. Because we know the first addresses of Islamic message, Quraysh, 
we know from the study of the sira that they were absolutely convinced at least majority of them if not all majority of them <coughs> they were convinced that prophet muhammad may peace and blessing be upon him he is a true prophet and quran is the word of our creator but we know that in the first 13 years of sira the makkan period how many people came to islam less than 200 now why is that the case if we have this mindset that if somebody is rationally convinced about the truth of something and that is sufficient then how can we explain that the quraish and the disbelievers of makkan period despite being convinced they did not believe in islam so what i'm trying to highlight is that it is not just the soundness of the argument it is not just the truthfulness of the message but at the same time the other person which we call the madu the one you are calling to if that person is kind of stubborn and he is not willing to embark on this journey you can't do much with the argument so always have this in your mind okay and allah subhanahu wa taala has made it very clear in the quran not only for prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but for all of us that you cannot guide the one whom you love it is allah subhanahu wa taala he is the one who guides people because guidance comes and sinks in the hearts and in the hearts of people and no one controls the hearts of people other than allah subhanahu wa taala so this clarification was very important now when we started this journey of establishing existence of god at that point i introduce you this concept and you uh, you might have seen this image at that time as well and in this image all i wanted to highlight is that the person who is away from guidance he is like a sick person and your role is like a doctor and for a doctor in order to suggest any medication there has to be a right diagnosis because if we diagnose something improperly or incorrect then whatever you suggest is not going to help clear so right understanding of the person whom we are talking to understanding his perspective is very important now then we discuss that those people who say that i don't believe in god because there is no evidence for god's existence we discuss that all of these people who are rejecting the message we categorize them in five categories in the first category i put this what what i just mentioned that those people who who say that there is no evidence for the claims of religion either god or after life this is one category of the rejectors second category is of those people who have negative perception of religion it may be based on some historical events for example in the case of christianity some people have this uh, negative image by the way i'm not condemning at this stage any religion i just want to give an example that those people who in their mind they hate christianity for example they hate they say that look uh, it it is all about controlling people it is all about exploitation of the masses and they give the example of catholicism and likewise when the people uh, they say that look uh, because as we know that at one point church has basically opposed the scientific revolution and critical thinking the famous classical example is galileo he was not allowed to hold on to his critical thinking because it was going against the teachings of the church so from from all of the historical events people people have developed a negative perception of religion okay and likewise in the case of islam for example when people think and on the basis of what they watch in the media 
and all of this negative propaganda against Islam, where Islam is being associated with all of these um, violence and terrorism. So on, on the basis of that, people have a negative impression of Islam as well. So this is the second category of people, where on the basis of some misinformation, as in the case of Islam, or on the basis of some historical events, as in the cases of Christianity, they have a negative impression of religion. This is the second category of people. And then third category is of those people who have some sort of anger against God and religion. It may be based on their personal negative experiences. For example, they have lost their loved one, as one example. Or it may be the classical problem of evil. They say that how can there be God when people are suffering, tsunamis happening, earthquakes happening, people are dying, this COVID-19. How can there be a loving God and we have all of these calamities? So on the basis of this, they have a anger problem against God and religion. And then the fourth category is where people, they are just, you know, busy in their lifestyle. They don't feel the need of religion. They are not concerned with the evidence or this and that. They are just not concerned with religion and afterlife. They think that they are just happy the way they are living their life. They are going for holidays, they're having a good career, a good family, all of that, and they are just satisfied with that. And they never gave a, a proper thought to the claims of religion. And the fifth category is when people, they are following some other religion and they strongly believe that they are upon the truth and they are not willing to entertain with any other message. Clear? So these are the five categories of people who, are, who we encounter in our conversation when we convey the message. Now, what I really want you to please have this, because you remember our today's topic is the practical steps which can help you in your Dava conversation. So point number one is, I would say, and this is the fundamental point, a proper understanding of the person you are talking to. And let me say this thing with full confidence. You will hardly come across any person who is following anything outside of these five categories. I am not making a claim. It is just what I have observed in my experience. So that majority of those people who reject the message, they fall in any of these five categories. So your first job would be that you understand that where this person is coming from and then address that particular area. For example, if a person is not too much obsessed with the, pro the, the problem that there's no, you know, for example, there's no evidence for God, then you don't need to embark on that journey of establishing God's existence. Because he is not denying God's existence. He's having problem that why these things are happening, why negative things are happening. So then you need to address that area and not the existence of God. Point number two. Why is it that I dedicated almost last four sessions on addressing this first category of people who say that there's no evidence for God's existence? Because if it, if it is only one of the five categories, then why I spend too much, even today's session, I'm going to spend a bit of time again to wrap up the whole discussion, which we have done in the previous session. Why is that the case? Now, please listen to this point very carefully. The reason I am focusing on this first point too much, because it doesn't matter if somebody is falling in any of the other categories. When you're having a serious discussion, a point comes. In any of the other categories, a point comes when this person says, but what is the evidence for God? Even though that may not be the starting point, but somehow when you, when you talk to any of these categories, not, not the fifth one, at least the first four categories, because fifth one, mostly they believe in some sort of God. So they would say that, okay, but why would you believe that there's God and there's afterlife? What proof do you have? So this is the reason that I want to address this. And second reason, is, and this is very important again, 
all this der- narrative of, of rejection of religion and God is justified with this first point, fundamentally. Because when it comes to justification, rest of the other categories, they cannot really justify denial of God's existence. This denial of God's existence is justified by the first point, and that is there is no evidence for God's existence. So that is the reason that even though this is just one of the five categories, but this category is very important for this reason. And last reason why I'm addressing the first category too much. So reason number one was that because somehow discussion ends up in the area of God's existence. And number two, those people who are rejecting God and religion, they justify their claim primarily on the basis of this scientific enterprise, that there's no scientific evidence for God's existence. Okay. And now, <clears throat> once we understand all of this background, then we dedicated the, those previous uh, three sessions after the first one, then the three sessions on establishing this point that why this thinking, why this stance or this perspective is flawed, that there is no evidence for God's existence. Now, when you're addressing this first cat, now, now, inshallah, I am now, now I'm giving you the practical steps that when you are addressing this first category of people, what is the flow of thought? What is the thread of your thought? Because of organized thought or organized message is very important. Because if you are giving a message and it is just all over the place, your thoughts are just scattered. They won't basically give a concise and hard hitting message. So for this reason, you have to organize your thought. So when it comes to organizing our thought with regard to the first category of people, those who say that we reject religion because there's no evidence, this is the thread of your thought. So, because when they are saying there's no evidence, in reality, they are saying there's no scientific evidence. So they are building all of their claim on the foundation of absence of scientific evidence. That because there's no scientific evidence, that's why the claims of religion are just myth. They are just fairy tales. Okay. It is not anything which is based on proofs and evidence. Now, point number one, we, you need to, and this is the most important point when you are addressing with this category of people. Point number one, you need to address is that how and on what basis you are, and we have discussed, by the way, this whole point in detail. Now I'm just summarizing all of those things. Inshallah, this presentation will give you a summary of all the previous four sessions, inshallah. So what point number one you need to mention is that yes, scientific method or scientific inquiry is one of the ways of acquiring knowledge, but it is not the only way of acquiring knowledge. Clear? Because, for example, and, and, and by the way, when you will say this, immediate reaction is, okay, then what are other ways of acquiring knowledge? So, inshallah, one of the ways of acquiring knowledge is revelation as well, but because we have not established the need of revelation, inshallah, I will come to that source, inshallah, in our, in our next session. But today, let's give them a, another source of acquiring knowledge, which is an equally valid source of knowledge, and that is a trustworthy testimony. For example, you know, there are events of First World War, Second World War, or there are, for example, events which we believe have happened that man has gone to the moon once upon a time. And now, obviously, it is in the past. Now we are way ahead of all of that. So, or for example, that, you know, we have this different, for example, historical figures, historical events. On what basis, on what basis, you know, we affirm, we affirm the truth of historical events. Because obviously, scientific inquiry means observation. 
an historical event by their definition they have happened in the past and on what basis we are having belief in those events because people have narrated those events and we as a human being we know that when something is coming with a mass transmission of with the so many chain of so many trustworthy people then it should be based or it should be true by the way i am not saying that everything which is just out there and people are saying that is true no what i'm saying is that trustworthy testimony which is coming from mass transmission from multiple chains and within those chains we have trustworthy historians and people and they are testifying to something for example i would i would really doubt i would really doubt that you can come across a common person in the street in your conversation who denies that there was such a thing as first world war and even if they say that there are footages and this and that but all of those footages and everything that is testimony which has been transferred to us we have not observed those events and we can never observe those events so this is one just example and there are many example inshallah i'll give you soon with the passage of time this is just one example that it is wrong to say that we only affirm those things which we can observe empirically clear and for example this claim itself this 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 claim itself you know this claim itself that everything that cannot be proved scientifically that is wrong this claim itself cannot be proven scientifically think about this if you ask someone that okay this claim that science is the only way of knowledge can you prove this claim scientifically just think about this it is a self defeating claim and by the way by the very important point we are not blaming science that oh because science cannot prove everything so no we are just pointing out that this is the nature of scientific enterprise science never claim to be a all knowing entity it is not the claim of the science it is the claim of the people who are rejecting religion and and god they just want to bank all of their evidence on science they just using the the tool of science to justify their claim okay so this was first point that scientific way is not the only way and then inshallah very quickly rest of the uh, two points that scientific method has this problem which called the problem of induction what is induction you remember i gave example last time as well if somebody has observed 100 sheep and all of them happen to be white now on the basis of his observation if he makes a conclusion that all sheep are white from a scientific point of view he is justified to make this claim because he made a sample and he he observed that sample and his conclusion actually match with the sample but isn't it a possibility that you end up saying 101 sheep and that is not white that is black is it possible yes so this is called the problem of induction that there are all there there always possibility of future observation which can contradict your current conclusion and it is not just again a blame on science it has happened in the history once upon a time science has given us different theories now they have been revised and in the past i have given you examples as well okay so we, we need to keep in mind and secondly science does not deal with the metaphysical question for example god god is not a material object so the question of god existence and question of after life which are the fundamental claims of religion they are not to be dealt in science however they can be studied in philosophy and we know that philosophers have discussed these topics 
from the age from the from the age old but we cannot say that these are the questions of physical sciences okay so these are metaphysical questions and likewise you know human being human beings have the sense of purpose and meaning we have the sense of happiness and sadness compassion now this all of these concepts which actually make most of what we are human beings they are moral agents they make moral choices they choose between good and evil all the time can we deal with all of these things within the science the answer is no so in the second point we are pointing out that science has limitation and lastly there is no dichotomy dichotomy means that you either believe in this thing or in this thing they are mutually exclusive there is no dichotomy in science and religion we discussed this topic in our previous session in a lot more detail where we discussed that science gives you four ground explanation which is apparently happening and religion gives you the background or ultimate explanation clear science answer the question of what it is and how is it working and religion gives the answer of why it is why is it that we have something this universe rather than nothing so this why question is not the question of science science deals with the question of what it is and how is it functioning this is the domain of science but religion gives you the answer of why clear so there is no dichotomy here science and religion they can they, they can go both hand in hand and by the way i am not proposing that in any stage in the human history there had never been a conflict between science and religion there had been point for example at one stage science or the, the uh, in the field of physics it was almost consensus that this universe is eternal it is just there from eternity past okay but the claim of religion was are they christianity or judaism or islam all of these three abrahamic faith their claim was that god has created this universe at one point of time now obviously at that time there was a clear conflict between the science and religion clear but what happened eventually today it is almost consensus that this universe came into existence it is not eternal yes there are multiple theories that what was the how, what was the process of it came into being was it one universe or multiverse or whatever but this much is agreed pretty much agreed that this universe in which we are living it started to exist so you see in this example that there may be the situation at one point when there's a conflict between science and religion we don't have to be panic okay because it is one it is either one of two possibilities either our understanding of the universe has some problem as it was the case when we said the universe is eternal or we might have wrong understanding of religion so it it's impossible impossible why because we as we as the people of religion our claim is and our belief is that this universe is the work of god and our scripture is the world of god and they are compatible to each other they can never contradict each other and that is why we believe and we claim that it is impossible that established scientific facts remember there are two things scientific facts okay and on the other hand scientific theories okay establish scientific facts can never go against what quran has said or what our script and by the way the reason i am i have never appealed to quran in any of my session because this is a topic that has to be addressed first that why we believe that quran is from the creator and inshallah now these topics are coming from the next session after life and Quran, inshallah. So, this was, this is these three points. You need to understand clearly, and you need to present as your starting point when it comes to the question of there is no evidence for God, that there is no 
that it is it is not the right thinking that somebody ask for scientific evidence and he claims that scientific evidence is the only way to establish something you need to address this with these three points okay let's move on now what are the fundamental claims of i said in the start that fundamental claims of religion are three in arabic we call them tawhid akhira and risala okay and you can say god after life and revelation need for revelation because without revelation we cannot understand this reality we can understand our purpose clear so and our claim is now please pay attention remember i am saying that we are wrapping up the discussion with the people who say that there's no evidence for god and after life and religion clear so first you need to mention those three points regarding the scientific inquiry and you need to point out the flaw in their thinking process because remember this if we do not uh, share the right world view the right perspective then you may be answering people's question for eternity because if you answer one question they'll bring a second one so always address the fundamental point so this fundamental basis of their thinking that scientific inquiry is the only way that has to be addressed first because there is a problem in their thinking process secondly now we are saying that as far as the fundamental claims of religion are concerned they are based on evidence and then we discuss this first one the first claim god and when it came to god you remember i said that never ever enter into discussion about god's existence until you establish first that what do you mean by god because people have different and sometimes very bizarre understandings of the concept of god with all due respect our christian friends when they when they preach that jesus was god you lost all of your rational basis because you are calling a human being a human being a dependent being a god okay so we need to establish first that when we say we believe in god what do we mean you remember i discuss all of this in detail in our previous session okay so when we say god it means one eternal incomparable unimaginable absolutely self contained possessor of ultimate will knowledge and power and the ultimate explanation of this entire universe this is what we believe as god and if you recall in in my previous session alhamdulillah we established all of them not just appealing to the quran obviously quran does say all of that but obviously the other person he is not taking quran as authority so we establish all of these attributes from rationality and reason not for the sake that okay we have to do this no we don't have to do this because i am not saying and this is something very important we have our elders in the community in our in our home country or even here as well if you ask an elder that can you prove for me existence of god he might not be able to give you any single evidence but does it mean that his belief in god is false not at all not at all because we believe that belief in god is our fitra that is our default position the reason we have to take this route of rational argument because the other person who is rejecting god he is like a sick person he, he is having a sickness and for a sick person you need to suggest some medication and one of the medication not all one of the medication is rational argument so the reason i make this disclaimer it is very important because in some uh in some understandings of islam it has been made as a claim that everyone first have to doubt everything and then they have to prove god existence no we don't believe this on the basis of quran and sunnah our understanding is that belief in god is in our fitra but sometime 
when people have deviated when they have gone away from their fitra then we need to bring them back through some sort of medi medi medication and one of the medication is sound rational arguments and which we gave in our last session now god in this understanding god with this understanding our claim is that with this understanding god is the necessary foundation god is not a possibility god is a necessary foundation of this entire universe and this universe which is dependent entity it can never exist never exist without necessary foundation or without existence of god now it's a big claim i know it's a big claim okay now then we discuss arguments on this claim as well so if you recall the previous session our fundamental or the main argument is it is called argument from contingency that argument from contingent objects you remember that alhamdulillah we have discussed in detail i, I it, it's impossible for me to go back in all of those again it will be waste of time for you i would i would assume and secondly um it's not beneficial as well to go in there again and again but just to be you know on very precise we said that this universe is a series of dependent objects premise a premise b a series of dependent object cannot exist without a necessary foundation and then conclusion is that universe cannot exist without a necessary foundation and we call this one as the stage 1 of the argument the name of the argument is argument from contingency okay and this is the stage 1 of the argument why i am calling it a stage 1 of the argument please i i explained this last time as well and listen this point carefully the reason i call this one as stage 1 of the argument because sometime when you present this argument in its first stage people try to basically you know uh, say that look even if we believe or even if we accept that there has to be a necessary foundation of this universe why that has to be god so yes we agree with you so in the first stage we only establish necessary foundation and you remember we discussed this analogy as well that these people this series of people in which each each one is leaning on the other it is a it is a series of dependent objects and, and you can see that this series of dependent objects cannot exist if this necessary foundation is not in existence and you can see that if you remove this foundation all of these people they will be on the ground right so this was our analogy which we use and we, by the way we use other analogies as well you remember from the domino and from other things as well that because our fundamental claim is that a series of dependent objects like these people in this analogy it cannot exist without a necessary foundation clear and then we discussed in stage 2 very important then we entered to the stage 2 of the argument that what are the essential attributes of this necessary foundation and at that stage and this was exactly our last session we discussed that it has to be one eternal incomparable absolutely self contained and possessor of ultimate will knowledge and power and it is ultimate explanation of all that exists now obviously i i, I cannot go into detail again but you can recall and inshallah in the description of this video i can attach the link for the previous video as well you can watch that that on what rational arguments we prove that these attributes are the essential attributes of necessary foundation and in case if someone is new in today's session inshallah you are more than welcome to ask me any question if if some gap is there in your understanding inshallah you can ask me in the q and a session as well so what what have we done so far we have given one primary one one primary argument to prove the existence of a necessary foundation with these attributes clear now what are some of the other arguments okay this is something inshallah new for all of you i mean new in the sense that we have not discussed in the previous session you can present some other 
arguments as well but i am calling them as the secondary argument the primary argument is argument from dependency that because this universe is dependent okay each object is dependent universe as a whole is dependent and a dependent series cannot exist without necessary or without independent foundation clear now in this argument it is from the quran by the way but the reason i did not give any reference because at this stage we are not pleading to quran in order to prove our point because at this stage quran is not the authority for the other side okay so if we consider all the possible options for the existence of this universe there are three options number one it came from nothing now at this stage many a time obviously a common person in the street is different and a person who is like a scholar in the field of physics he is different okay so when i talk to somebody who who is a learned person in the field of physics i will talk in some other way but when you talk to a common person you can ask him you can ask this common person that if i say if i make this claim that this morning i have a delicious breakfast and that was nothing think about this would it make any sense no it's absurd because if i had some breakfast then it cannot be nothing and if it was nothing then i have done not done any breakfast to begin with so from nothing nothing come and this universe is something it could not have come from nothing why because from nothing nothing come second option is self created universe and this is another option proposed by the uh, atheist that no there are laws of nature laws of nature have created this universe and even the likes of stephen uh, stephen hawking he gave this uh, argument as well in his book he said that laws of nature they are responsible for the creation of this universe inshallah i will discuss about the laws of nature in a minute but let's talk about this one this idea that something can create itself this idea itself is absurd and i often give example or analogy in my session and i took this from brother hamza zorzis mashallah great brother he said that if if someone says or if 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 a person says that my mother she gave birth to herself just think about this if someone makes this claim that my mom she gave birth to herself would you accept this claim of course not right you know why because this is absurd because when you are saying that something is self created you are saying that that thing is already existing how come if that thing is already existing then how it is coming into existence you see because this claim that universe is self created it is as though as someone is saying that my mom existed before she was born clear so from and by the way remember i said earlier that these are the examples which you, which you can give to a common person okay and inshallah they make sense for common people i'm telling you on the basis of experience inshallah okay if it cannot come from nothing it cannot be self created what is the other option it has a maker clear so when we are proposing that this universe has a maker it is not something irrational it is the logical conclusion that if this universe came into existence then that's the only rational option because if you reject this option then you are either you are saying that universe came from nothing or you are saying that universe is self created and both of them are absurd and by the way a fourth thing which somebody might say that this universe never came into existence it is eternal but i have told you already that this is not even the position of scientific community number 1 and number 2 if you recall we have discussed in our last session that this is impossible it's impossible why because if you are saying that universe is eternal you are saying that time is infinite and we discuss in detail that time cannot be infinity 
because infinity is a concept okay and this universe is actually something in existence okay and if something is really a physical entity it cannot be infinity clear so anyhow this is another uh, another you can use this argument as well that this universe basically has been created it cannot have come from nothing or it cannot be self created another option or an, another argument you can appeal to the people's common sense okay because look majority of the people you know they can see your point with these day to day example you don't need to go too deep okay look at this example if you ask anyone this is a very famous portrait or painting of mona lisa if you ask any person majority of the people they know that the who who is the creator use the word creator okay who is who is the creator of this painting of mona lisa the answer is it is the italian artist leonardo da vinci clear okay let's move on okay if that is the if the, if that is the case who is the creator of da vinci and if your answer is no one no one because for for, for atheist no one okay what is more complex and more sophisticated a life less painting or a living da vinci regarding a life less painting you believe that it must have a creator and regarding the living human being you say it is self created or from nothing isn't it absurd clear yeah. another example of the common sense they just like a image of a robot which is made by the uh, the company honda okay so if you ask anyone who made this robot the answer is honda clear now and if you ask who made this human being the answer if the answer is no one i mean think what is more complex a conscious being a conscious human being or a robot because think about this i always tell people this point in, in this example that robot is just a one example of the creation of human being just think about this it means that human beings are far more complex far more sophisticated they are living entities they have consciousness okay and you are saying that this robot has to have a creator and human being who is the creator of the robot think about this human being is the creator of the robot does not need any maker on what basis clear so these are some of the common sensical examples you can use inshallah in your converse, inshallah i'm ending very soon in your conversation so last point inshallah last point they would this is the point of laws of nature or mother nature clear let's deal with this one because sometime this thing comes as the answer the okay laws of nature are responsible or mother nature is responsible okay may i meet mother nature does anyone ever see her think about this because sometimes you know people are using terminologies even they themselves might not have thought about that so a, as a caller to islam you are basically giving them the right question to think that look you are using these terms mother nature what is what is mother nature where does she live you see okay now is it not a non mother nature is it not a non existing imaginative entity which is given the role of a creator think about this you have not seen mother nature okay it is just in your imagination it is just a idea an abstract idea the way you try to explain the creation okay so uh, you actually you are you have you have created an idol mother nature in this sense is an idol which you have created with your own imagination why why idol because as back in the days people used to give the attributes of god to their idols in the in this age obviously idols are not very popular now now you are giving the same attributes of god to these imaginative entities like mother nature clear okay what about the laws of nature because these are two terms 
मदर नेचर एंड लॉज ऑफ नेचर ओके वॉट अबाउट लॉज ऑफ नेचर आक्स अ कॉमन पर्सन कैन देर बी लॉज एंड नो लॉ गिवर गिव दम द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ ट्रैफिक लॉज इन देयर कंट्री फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन दिस कंट्री वी हैव ट्रैफिक लॉज क्लियर can someone ever believe that these laws they just came into being from just pop into existence no we have minds they are people behind the laws so if there are laws there have to be law givers clear and science is discovering these laws remember this point i discussed in the past as well science is discovering these laws science is not the law giver clear now how can the how can laws of nature create the universe when they themselves came into existence with the universe actually when somebody is saying that laws of nature are responsible they are actually saying that something existed before it is before its existence why because there was no such a thing as laws of nature before the universe because laws of nature they started to exist clear so these are some of the inshallah points which you can discuss with a layman with a common person okay and let me tell you this thing majority of the time you deal with the common people you don't have to be too complex and complicated always read the other person yes if somebody is an intellectual you know he wants to embark on some intellectual journey and this and that, then you can head on all of those rational arguments but for a common people my advice is be just simple be very simple because a common person they have this fitra inshallah you can appeal to their fitra okay now last is this inshallah last one last point inshallah from my side then you can ask me questions so <clears throat> now some food for thought laws of nature or mother nature are merely uh, uh, they are the patterns and regularities in the universe because what is laws of nature they are simply the patterns and regularities in the universe okay when there was no universe it means there was no nature and hence there were no laws clear so you cannot say either a scientist or a, a common person you cannot say that laws of nature created the universe because laws of nature they themselves came into being with the universe clear second point and that is very important point actually that we are willing to consider unseen non existing imaginative entities such as mother nature and laws of nature and we call them as the creator of the universe clear but we say that when it comes to god we will not believe in god until we see him is it not inconsistency think about this you know for example if you if if your criteria is that you would not believe in something or you would not consider something you would not acknowledge something you would not conceive something until you see that thing but you have not seen any such thing as mother nature you are you have given it the role of all of that clear now i gave now i gave my answer here that why is it the case that people are rejecting god and religion but they are willing to entertain the ideas of mother nature dark energy aliens none of them is they have seen okay but why is it that they they, they don't have any problem with these ideas but they have problem with the idea of god here is my answer at least one uh, possible answer affirming the imaginative entities like mother nature dark matter or this and that it has no effect no implications on one's life or one's choices in the life think about this either you affirm mother nature or you don't affirm what's the big deal clear but but the moment you confirm or you affirm existence of god and when i say existence of god we have already established what we mean by god okay but when you affirm the existence of god then you have to deal with the questions of meaning purpose and afterlife why because in all traditions we are taught 
either Islam or Christianity or Judaism. When it is God, then we know that God has made us moral agents. He has given us the knowledge of good and evil. Why? Because we are going to held accountable on the basis of this knowledge. You see the reason? So for this reason, men just want to deny the idea of God. Why? Because man inside knows. He knows and she knows that affirming the idea of God is actually making alive the narrative of afterlife and accountability. That is the main problem. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our hearts and minds. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, first of all, give us this yaqeen and conviction that Islam and Islamic principles are the ultimate truth. And they are the best ways to follow in our lives. And then, inshallah, we can share with, with the others. Barakallahu feekum. Jazakumullah khair for, inshallah, joining.